Hey, this is John Young with Weekend Handyman. Today we're going to be going and replacing this switch in our garage. Now this switch controls that fan. Now in a, a garage situation, we'll bring the vehicles in. This is in a completely climate controlled area. And you'll have moisture in a car, rain after rain or winter. And I have a ceiling fan. Basically, it was one of the old ceiling fans that came from the house. After a while, ceiling fans develop a tick, 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 tick thing going on as the, they just age, what have you. So I brought it in here and I hooked it up or wired it up, mounted it just right up to the ceiling above there, hooked it up on a timer. And this is just a, a standard rotary timer that goes to 60 minutes and it's been here for a long time, but it's starting to get stuck. It, it'll like, you turn it and you go to your time and it, sometimes it'll go turn off and be a timer and sometimes it'll just stay there and it'll run overnight. And I don't like that. So we're gonna replace it with a digital timer. I've got a couple of digital timers that we're going to be looking at here. I've got the Woods Pro and I also have the uh, Defiant, their push button countdown uh, timer. They both pretty much work the same way. On the very bottom, let's see, I'll move it right there. On the very bottom, you have the on switch. So you can basically turn it on full time, or you have a button to push for a variety of different times that you want to do. And the, um, the Woods one, that on switch will cycle you through. And on the uh, Defiant, you can go and p push one of the other buttons to get a time. The biggest difference between the two, they both have a max of four hours on uh, with the timer, is just that the Woods has got eight different settings compared to six different settings. I'm actually going to use the Woods one in this application because I want to have it so I can go for that, you know, the 20 minutes, uh, one hour, two hour, and this one has five, 15, 30, it, either one would be fine, but this one is the one that the kids are most uh, familiar with and I want to make it just as easy for them and I don't want them to be hitting that bottom button, turning it on and leaving it on. So we're going to go with this particular one. Now. In this case, if I were here all the time and I didn't want a timer, I could just put a standard uh, standard single, single pole um, switch here. Could be just your standard light switch or it could be a rocker switch like this. And it's just a simple single pole. So you have your, your lead coming in, your lead going out, and this breaks the connection to shut it off or makes the connection to turn it on. This is in essence what we're replacing in this configuration. The way I wired this is in a garage, most of the time your garage door openers up on the top where the opener is, has an outlet. And it's most of the time a two, uh, two uh, space outlet or you know a double outlet. So there's the one for the garage door opener and there's a second one. So what I did is I ran, in essence, an extension cord from that down to the switch so it could control it. And then I ran it up and I'm gonna literally plug it in over here on the next to the garage door opener. So for this application to remove power for it, I just need to go over there and unplug it and then we can get to work. Uh, I've got the switches here. The only other tools I'm really going to need are going to be um, a screwdriver in case I need to restrip some wires. I've got a utility knife for that or if you have a wire stripper you're great with that. And then the only other thing I'm going to need is once I pull this off is a little bit of a plier. So I'm going to go unplug, get the, uh, the pliers and such and we're going to take this apart. So the power's off, I can turn the switch and nothing happens because again, in this case, it's unplugged. If it's a situation where it's more of a hardwired uh, thing, you'd need to make sure it is unplugged or, or the breaker's switched off and then off you go. So since I'm really not going to be w wasting too much time to salvage this switch because I know that's defective, I don't mind if I bend things or break things a little bit as I'm taking it off. Now the reason why I like the Woods version is it has the plate with it, whereas the other one doesn't. Now this same concept would work if I were going to be replacing a switch in the house that was controlling the ceiling fan. If it was just a single switch that was just turning the fan on and off, this would be the same concept. Whereas I could put a timer in there and then I would be able to control the speed of the fan via the fan itself with a high, medium, low on the fan. This would be the switch, the timer that would turn it on, the fan would run for a while and then shut off, which in some applications would be really nice. If I had a two gang box here, one was the light control, one was the fan control, I could do this. Now some digital fan control things won't work with a timer. If you have that, you're gonna have to do something different than what this is. But some of the older fans where they don't have the digital and all the dimming things and such all built in with one device, they could have this kind of a situation. We need to get the old one out first to see what we have. So it looks like a blade. It isn't a Phillips, so it's just a standard screwdriver to run these screws out. Once the screws are out, we can pull this out and we can take a look at what we have in here for wiring and how it was done. So this is a basic single pole uh, configuration. So we can have 
a single light switch if we wanted to that basically is the the disruptor of the flow of energy on between the hot and the load so basically i would be coming in with the the main the main uh this is our neutral and then i'd be coming in this is our power coming in and then i put the load on and this would go just exactly like this and that's how a lot of um, ceiling fans would be done if you have just a switch and then you're controlling the speed up there if you're controlling speed down here this timer is not going to be able to do that do that for you all the timer is going to be able to do is turn it on or off and then you'd have to control speed up there if you've got on or off and you want to put a timer in this video will help you with that now the switch that we're going to be using from woods here also has the little plate on it yay it has on the uh, on the, the the spots here we've got our ground where we can go in and out with our ground so we can ground the device and ground the switch then we have our i think this is the neutral side here and then we have uh, let's see the hot goes in and then the load the load going to the fan goes out so in this particular case i could put the two neutral here and go that route and and have that or i could run a jumper to this but as you can see there's two little holes there so i'm going to be able to push the two neutral wires in there and i need to do that in this configuration so that this will glow if i don't do it don't have this uh, the neutral in here it won't glow so we're going to take these apart and put everything in here and then we're going to be ready to uh, put it all back together so in this particular, to release these two wires, uh, there's sometimes there's a little a little thing where you push like a little paper clip in and it will release the wire. In this particular one, there's a couple of screws in here that we need to get into. And I don't know if this screwdriver will do it. I'm gonna have to find a smaller screwdriver. Now these are both Phillips heads in here, so I need to loosen them up because what they're doing is just putting just putting a little pressure to hold the wires in place. I'll see, I'm gonna bring this over and see if you guys can see that little nut that was down in there. There you go, yeah, you can see those. So a person ran the wires in, and then that kind of pushed down on a plate that pinched the wires into place. Now I'm going to take the neutral apart. Now this may not work as well as because I've, I actually literally used an extension cord because I wanted the other end to have a, a plug on the other side. So let's take a look and see if this is going to be a deal breaker or if I'm going to be able to to uh, loosen these up and use it properly. By the way, I'm using down here, I've got the little works table, the little sidekick. And I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can check that out. But when you're doing little projects around the house, having a little table that is a, at the right height for putting tools and things on so they're accessible. And then it has little, little spots on it where you can put screws and things so they don't roll off and disappear. That's really, really nice. Okay, so let's see. We want to do the neutral. We'll try that one first because that's probably going to be, that's going to give me my idea of how difficult this is going to be. So I'm going to back that out and put one in. And I don't know if this, because it's a, uh, a, a uh, I'm not sure if that copper is going to go in there, if I'm going to have to change wires. Oh, it did get in there. Excellent. Now we'll tighten this up. And then I want to make sure that it's in there securely. Oh yes, very nice. Okay, so then the ground, I've got my little ground pigtail here. I'm gonna put that in and then I'm going to do, let's see, this is the this is the load and it says on the side they've got the, excuse me, this is hot coming in. On the side it has, that comes over here. So we'll loosen this up. Yes straighten the wire and we're going to put a twist on it rolling it together so it will be hopefully acting more as one single strand and that went in there wonderfully tighten it up on that good 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 and then we will put this one goes to the fan itself so that is the load and I'll put that on the other side Oh. You want to make sure there isn't a pretty much any wire exposed on these ends. So you can see there's a tiny bit of copper here, if you can see that. I don't know if you can. But you don't want to have that much is probably about as much, and that's only about maybe an eighth of an inch. If there was a little bit more, I would be trimming it and cutting it out. So, okay, so we got the, the, the hot right there. 
Good. This is the load. This is our neutral. And then we will run that little pigtail for the ground on this side. We've got to back the nut out first. And tighten that up, and that is secure. Now we will carefully push the wires in and get them into place. Now in our box, it will have the screws that we need, and it has the the wire nuts, if we needed those, well, the only thing I really need is the screws to go in here, and I could use these, but I also have the same ones that came from the last switch, and I'm going to be throwing that one because it's no good, so I'm just going to reuse those. That way I'm not, uh, I'm not that little bag. I can just go put that in my miscellaneous bin of electronic pieces and have it for a rainy day in which I will need that. Now I'm putting these screws in to hold it into place. I'm not actually going to put the face plate on and finish this because I want to test it before I do that. Make sure that I have everything connected right and the switch is functioning because there, I haven't had that when I've replaced. I think this is the fourth one we put in the house. I haven't had a problem with any of them yet, but you know there's always a chance that something will be dead on arrival. So you want to make sure that things are tested before you seal everything up. And you want to safely test things. You don't want to do something and then have it where it blows up. So I'm going to go plug things in. Everything's here. My wires are... So really, technically, I couldn't even get a shock if I reached in there because the things are too far back. But I'm going to plug in, and then we'll test it. Now, I don't know if you can see the blue, the blue, the blue. There it is. The light is on. So at five minutes, it will be on for five minutes and then shut off. I can toggle through 10, 15, 20 up to four hours, and then I hit it one more time after four hours, and it's off. So everything works and works well. I'm going to go unplug it and put the faceplate on just because that's a good practice to be in because sometimes when you're working with outlets specifically and you're working with a screwdriver, if something happens and you slip and you fall, that slips and something falls, and you, yeah, yeah. So I just always like to unplug to put things and finalize them, and then we're good to go. So let's unplug one more time. Okay, so put our little cover on to make it so it's nice, so it looks nice, and everything will be sealed up. Now the little screws, there's generally two different size screws when it comes to covers. There's the short ones. These are typically the, the shorter ones that are used for outlets. And then there's longer ones that are used uh, used in configurations for light switches. And on the, the more square type switches, the rocker switches, you're using the short ones most often. But when you're doing some retrofitting, sometimes you've got to, you need the long ones, which of course they come with the right ones typically. Once in a while, the paint will chip off if you're kind of putting a screw in because you damage the paint. You can buy replacements. Just make sure if you were using ivory or white or whatever you're using, you're getting the right color. But if you're looking at your these little screws and it's like, gosh, they look like ick because the paint is chipped off, just know that you can go to your big box store or your hardware store and pick these up and they're good to go. So I think everything is good. It's all back in place. Let's plug it in one more time and test it out. There we are. So our fan is back up and running. We're on a little timer switch that's a digital timer switch, so it's going to work for us better than the mechanical one, which eventually over time gets dust and grime in it and just doesn't work as well as it used to. The old mechanical switch, the digital one. This took running time with me kind of fiddling around. It took about 15 minutes to do this, uh, this whole changeover. And again, this can be done for in the house if you're going to be using any time where you have a switch, not a, a, um, a dial. If you've got a dial like to control the speed, you put a timer in there, you're going to lose the ability to control the speed. If you have one switch that has uh, the top has on for the light and the bottom has on for the fan, you have to do some more fancy wiring. But if you have it where this is on for the fan and there's a second switch that deals with the light and this is separate and it's only turning the fan on or off, you could put the timer in there and you'd follow pretty much the same things we did with this application and be able to put that timer in to control your ceiling fan. This is John Young with The Weekend Handyman. Thank you for watching.